Hey everybody, um, welcome to another video. Just doing a uh, quick update video. Um, markets have been actually um, pretty accommodative, pretty friendly, pretty nice past uh, you know week or two. Um, I did a little video, uh, rather an audio recording after the, uh, the the Fed decision to to no longer hike on the rates. Um, since then, you're kind of seeing the aftermath of it. Uh, I had suggested the market saw that short term pretty positive. In fact, it did. Um, and then the next day, maybe not so positive. But since then, it's, it's been pretty neutral to the leaning positive direction. Um, I remain pretty interested in the idea that as tax time is here, we're close to uh, you know the, the middle of April. Um, in fact, today's April 2nd. Um, tax returns, good little short-term stimuli for the spending economy, for the consumption economy. Um, but uh, it's one of those that it might be a little bit of a boost. It might be that good thing that takes us through Easter. Um, we very well may hit new highs by Easter. I don't see it probable, but it very well could happen. Um, but the focus on the Fed has definitely put the markets in a position where not only are they... Um, acting in such a way that may seem kind of, um, they're feeling a little easy right now. Um, it's sort of the, uh, sit back on the couch, kick your feet up and relax kind of thing, which is not what you want to be doing, especially right now. Um, not to say you need to be making a lot of action, but this isn't a time where markets should be disinterested. Um, 2017 is a good example of a fairly disinterested market. Um, very little volatility. The markets were as as almost as quiet. I mean, it was each and every day just up a little bit, maybe down a little every five or six days. Today, in fact, this morning we saw something kind of interesting in terms of the um, cryptocurrency, blockchain. Um, you know, you're, you're hearing about Bitcoin, Riot, some of these other big players, but they all all of a sudden have this kind of renewed interest. This was something that was just. Uh, Everybody was talking about it in 2017, 2018 wasn't so great for it, um, but all of a sudden it, it seems like it's grabbing attention again. What I would say to that is this is likely a situation where uh, trading interest is causing that specific area of a very speculative market to get some newfound or, or refound attention, and that's because they're looking for volatility. Volatility is actually very constructive, especially if you're in a trading environment. And when the rest of the market is very low in volatility, um, you want something very speculative because it's an opportunity to, in the more complex trading methodologies, you can make money when everything else is really quiet. When volatility is low, they go looking for something else. So it doesn't mean that everyone's attention should all of a sudden shift there. However, I would not be surprised if you start to see some more chatter about um, the, the cryptocurrency space kind of start back up. Don't fall prey to that. Don't jump right into that. It's not a new prevailing trend, let's say. Um, it, it's probably much more a matter of, of a conditional um, relevance. Um, the condition being lower volatility in the other markets. So Larry Kudlow, uh, economic advisor to President Trump, um, recently, uh, see here this past Friday, um, went on one of the major media outlets and, and said that the, the Fed should not tighten just because of prosperity. Um, tighten meaning raising rates. Um, effectively called for, for a slash in rates um, because in his mind, I guess he sees it as, as the Fed should effectively accommodate markets because markets have been a little bit, let's say sluggish or again, lack of volatility, whatever it may be. And then the Fed, you know, with their decision not to raise rates any further, um, Kudlow was effectively you know, kind of confirming that decision. Um, but also with the, the notion of, of slashing rates, um, that is in terms of how it's being viewed by markets in general, they're looking at that as a positive because it's accommodative. Um, it doesn't mean it's good for the economy. Again, as I've said in a past video and some past recordings, just because something is good economically doesn't mean it's going to favor the markets. 
just because it's good for markets doesn't mean it's going to favor the economy or doesn't mean it's favoring the economy. Um, however, sometimes it is the case. It's just not that there is a direct correlation there. Um, what is interesting or what does need to be uh, kind of focused on in this case, as we're looking at our overall economic picture, um, I've said many times now that, you know, when you're at the peak, when you're at the top, um, it's kind of hard to go higher when you've, when you've scaled the mountain and you're at the absolute summit, it, it, you, you don't take another step up. You do maybe take a step down. And while to you, you're not as high as you once were. So you've gotten worse and that's the way the market does tend to look at things. It doesn't mean you're in a bad place. So what I've been kind of harping on is this idea that the markets are probably going to have a good bit of turbulence um, running into the summer months. Let's just say if we use Easter as kind of a turning point, I don't think it'll necessarily be Easter. I've said first couple weeks of May is when we might see it. Um, June, definitely. Um, I could be very wrong here, but I do think though that the fact that markets are showing this timidness and when you see the kind of market action that you're seeing when they fed and with economic advisors to the president make statements that would be very accommodative to a, a, a marketplace um, when they don't necessarily need to be accommodative. You know, that is to say, you know, just because that hiker or that mountain climber reached the peak, they took the first step down, you know, it's not, oh, he took a step down or she took a step down. I need to immediately put their leg in a, in a cast because they, 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 there must be a reason that they didn't go higher. Um, bad analogy, but you put that mountain climber's leg in a cast, it's going to be really hard for them to safely come down or go back up. They're just going to kind of be paralyzed. Um, that could potentially be what occurs here. So I, I'm not really in favor of the idea that we're, we're looking to be accommodative. Um, I don't think cutting rates is going to be a favorable thing. Um, worst case scenario, I think the Fed should hold rates as they are. Again, this is assuming the Fed is what it is. Um, we can talk philosophically about what would happen if there were no such thing as a Fed. The world might be a better place. Um, but the point is, is that the way that the market's looking at things, they see that as a positive, but that is a short-term positive. Um, an accommodative Fed is an indication that longer term they see things negative. That could be a sentiment shift. That could be a signal to the markets that quick, get your trades in, make your money now because there's not going to be a lot of opportunity in you know the coming months. Um, that's my viewpoint. And it seems like the market is kind of reading things that way right now. What I look at in terms of just assessing whether I want to be participating in markets is I try to use a common denominator for comparing all the different types of markets. So if I were to say, let's look at a portfolio, we have one half of the portfolio, it just let's just keep it simple. One half is stocks, one half is bonds. Stocks isn't just, I go buy stocks. There's all kinds of different stocks. They all have different risk measures. They all have different uh, attributes, characteristics. Um, you know, it, it, it's like, let's just say stocks are humans. There's all different kinds of humans. Um, and let's just say bonds are like dogs. There's tons of different breeds of dogs. At the end of the day, they're all dogs, but they can be different sizes, shapes, whatever it may be. Um, when I look at all of them, though, what I want to do is I want to not compare uh, a, a, a large company stock to a small company stock and say which is uh, better to determine whether I'm going to be invested. Instead, what I want to say is of stocks, are any of them uh, right now giving an indication that they offer a better reward for the inherent risk that I have to take to invest in them. So when, when I'm comparing those things, uh, domestic equities are still out. The, the international space, still what I call a red light. Um, even in the commodities, which isn't an equity, but I kind of look at it sort of as, a, as an alternative equity in the case that it, it was needed. Even the general commodities marketplace really doesn't give me any good signals. When I have all of these things read, that is not a good sign. This is the way they've been. They have been this way since December. But that to me is I need to see these things break out and break above their resistance lines before I'm going to say, okay, let's go put money, more money or money that we put in cash. Let's go take that to market. That is to say, there's not a justifiable return uh, for these assets. Um, as, as compared to, or relative to the risk that they potentially present. Um, 
fixed income side, that's a whole nother wacky world right now. Um, I'm going to kind of save commentary on that. Um, but really what I want to highlight is, is what people tend to focus on is the stock market. Um, there's a reason that we remain, you know, pretty, uh, pretty hesitant to, to add new money. We have some positions that remain, you know, in, in the, the equity markets. I've, I've still been pretty favorable on mid caps. Um, but I want to look for that low volatility. So, um, that's been a focal point.